Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today, that is the X10 Powerhouse. Control your home with your IBM PC. Yeah, that's right. This is home automation, 1980s style. The selection of components and software is supposed to let you use your MS-DOS-based computer and turn it into a control center for all sorts of devices around your house, most notably lights in the case of this particular set of stuff. But it's not gonna stop there. We're gonna go also to the 90s with this HAL 2000 home automated living thing, <laughs> which is, a, it's like the same idea as the X10. In fact, it uses some of the X10 hardware, but the software is voice controlled and is sort of an AI assistant for your home. Yeah, does that sound familiar? While well, they were doing this in the 90s, so uh, Google Home and Alexa, you can eat your heart out because we're going back in time to do home automation oddware style. Let's take a look at the X10. So this is the X10 powerhouse number one in home control for your IBM PC. Well, this is just one of many X10 products, though. These were actually introduced in 1975 by Pico Electronics of Glenrothes, Scotland. And before the X10, they were making single-chip calculator processing units in conjunction with General Instrument, powering machines such as the Royal Digital 3. And actually, they do make the claim of this being the very first microprocessor, but eh, that is very much debatable and is perhaps a topic for another video or two in the future. But onto the X10, though, which was so named for being their 10th project after eight integrated circuit projects like those for General Instrument, and the ninth being the AccuTrack 4000 remote control turntable. And so it was just a logical progression to go from, hey, we can do remote controlled programmable turntables, so why not just control and program everything else in the house? And so the X10 was born. And it originally used power line communication, not radio controlled, not infrared, no, actually communicating between devices using only your home power lines. And this sent a 120 kilohertz carrier signal burst over the wires of your house. So this not only relied on the wiring in your house being up to snuff in order to work properly, but it also meant that it could spread to nearby homes or apartments if both of you had an X10 and you happened to be on the same shared electrical system. Even if you set the house and module code on the device, there was no encryption there, so shenanigans could definitely be had, and you could mess with your neighbors through a remote controlled device, which is pretty great. I imagine that would have been some fun in the 70s. Heck, it'd be fun now, what am I saying? But yeah, this initially cost around $50 for a control center, similar to this one here, and $20 per module. These different modules, like the LM465 here for lamps, would plug into different devices of different power requirements and then connect through the power lines to the main control center module. And it's worth noting that these weren't just sold as the X10 powerhouse, they were also sold as the plug-in power home automation system through Radio Shack starting in 1979. Although this is a much later model, of course, but yes, the same basic idea anyway. The computer interfaces, though, actually started showing up in 1983 for the ill-fated Mattel Aquarius. <laughs> that didn't last long. The Aquarius was killed, and then, of course, the project was killed. So there were other ones being developed for other computers instead. Radio Shack had one going for the TRS-80 color computer, of course. And then it was shortly followed up for other computer systems like the Apple II, the Commodore 64, MS-DOS based PCs, etc. And in case you're curious, X10 is actually still around making home automation stuff today. With the cheaper ones being very similar to the old school devices we'll be looking at here, and of course newer ones that work with smartphones and all that kind of Wi-Fi nonsense that absolutely everyone is doing and is honestly a little bit boring at this point. So that's why we'll be taking a look at the old school versions like this one, because I think that it is far more interesting and uh, unusual oddware type of thing. A viewer named Kenneth from Texas actually sent me this along with some of the other powerhouse devices we'll be looking at here. And this right here is an original receipt for an X10 powerhouse IBM PC computer kit like we'll be looking at here in a moment. And uh, you can actually see that it is $19.90 in 1986 is when this was bought. Granted, this is only for the main unit for serial connections and it doesn't actually come with the modules to plug in your lamps and whatnot. 
Speaking of those modules, you can see right there the some of the different ones that you could get for this. Appliances, lamps, a mini controller, so you don't have to plug it into your PC necessarily, and then a wall switch module for controlling your light switches. This particular model, the CP290, can be left connected to the computer for instantaneous control of up to 256 differently coded X10 modules, but in either case does not tie the computer up. It's like having software which runs in the background. Well, let's just open this up. I'm very curious what's inside. Hmm. Well, there we have a, a cable, and uh, we, got, we got some really nastiness. That's a lot more gross than I thought it would be. And let's see, we have some software. The Powerhouse SC IBM version 1.0. All right. We have it on a 360K disc here. Y4 manuals. Yes, Y4 art thou manuals. This nasty thing, I gotta clean this up before we do anything else. Ugh. It feels like old cheese and cigarettes. Yeah. Now we have a relatively clean X10 powerhouse computer interface. And uh, yeah, so it looks like we have some toggle switches here for on and off. Um, they're not very satisfying switches. Oh, and we have a battery here. Looks like a nine volt. We have this right here that plugs into this. And then this plugs into... I have no idea. Well, it turns out that cable was completely wrong for the IBM PC. It was for the Commodore 64, which is why it had an edge connector and not the nine pin serial adapter which will connect to the RS-232 of the IBM PC-AT here that I'm gonna be trying it on. This is going to plug in to the X10 powerhouse right here. Oh yeah, and I need a nine volt battery to go in there. All right, that little red LED on there is flashing. Don't know if you can see that, but it is. So I guess that means it has power. And I'm assuming this plug for the wall is what is gonna make it uh, adapt to the different wall adapters um, or modules, I guess, like this lamp module. I have a few of these that are still sealed because they're really easy to find, it turns out. Whew. Smells weird. You see right there those dials on the front. Those are the settings for this individual unit, which says this is a number one unit on my personal X10 network. And then that house is set to house A. And that is kind of what I mentioned earlier as far as you'd be able to control your neighbor's X10 if you were on the same grid or whatever. But uh, I'm in a house, I don't have neighbors. So I'm not gonna be able to test that. But I am going to just see if this works as it's supposed to in my own house here. So I have a nice little lamp right here. It is already turned on. I'm just not plugged into anything, obviously. And then we're just gonna plug it into the bottom of the X10 powerhouse lamp module. And yes, this does only go up to 300 watts. <laughs> and then we'll just plug it into the outlet over here. And I'm assuming it's just not gonna do anything since we don't actually have the X10. Did that just flash? Okay, it's flashing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't actually have the X10 uh, powerhouse computer interface plugged into anything, but um, that's weird. I'll unplug it for now. I don't, I don't know what the heck that's about. That's unusual. Okay. Uh, okay, got that plugged into the computer, and then we'll get the uh, computer interface plugged into the wall. And I guess I'm going to plug the lamp back in now because, you know... Okay, well, pressing the button manually works, but in the meantime, it's flashing. Yeah. I was not expecting the ghetto strobe light effect. That's for sure. Okay, it's time for the powerhouse software, and I hope this disc works. <laughs> I have not tested this at all. Oh good, an error. The interface contains no data. Write protect error, writing drive A. Well, it did have the little thingy on there, the little uh, write protect piece of tape. Okay, I'm just gonna copy everything over to a directory here. And we'll run it this way. 
The interface contains no data. Ah, uh, okay, whatever. You can enter the time. It's uh, 4.16 p.m. Monday? Uh, no, don't want to change that. All right. Uploading X10 data. All right, selecting on allows you to turn on selected. Nah, I don't know. Oh, code is A1. All right, let's try turning it on. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Check this out. Turning it off now. Oh, that's really cool. Turn it on now. Yeah. Let's see if we can dim. Uh, dim it to 50% now. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> let's, let's put that back. <laughs> Turn it off. It hurts. <laughs> that might be because I have an LED bulb in there and it might not just know. Let me see if I have an incandescent. Check it out. I do. I hope it's still like valid. So this one doesn't seem to be flashing. I'm assuming that flashing weirdness was just because it was an LED, um, which obviously didn't exist when the software and hardware was made. All right, we'll just see. Yeah, it just turns it on and then turns it off. It doesn't seem to be dimming it either. Maybe that's just because of the type of lamp. Oh no, no, it is dimming. Dude, incandescent is the key. Let's put it back up. <laughs> oh, oh, that's really, that's so cool. Look, my IBM is controlling my house through the power lines and serial cables and connections. And wow, dude, this is pretty awesome. So yeah, you can definitely choose when these things are going to do their thing. And the idea is that you don't have to have the software on to have it do its thing. Like... Let's say, um, and I'm gonna have it come on at 427. And so I have, I've programmed it to do that and 427, it should come on by itself, even if the software isn't going, because it's supposed to send like a signal to the box. All right, software is not on. We're gonna wait till 427 to see if it does its thing. And uh, that, that should be friggin' awesome if it does. Ah, I did it! Oh, it did it! <laughs> and so I should be able to control it. Yeah, I can control it manually using the box. That is awesome! Wow, this is this is the most useful oddware probably ever. Uh, it's not really even oddware because it is still an effective thing. It's just, it's hugely obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> There's way better systems to do this, but I mean, it still does exactly what it's supposed to do if you have the hardware. That is so cool. Well, now I'm really excited to check out another version of this thing. So that was the 80s MS-DOS side of things for the X10, but what about the 90s? Well, say hello to the creatively named HAL 2000, not to be confused with the HAL 9000. Set the thermostat to 68 degrees. I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. So this one is a voice-controlled version of the X10. And uh, really the hardware is pretty much the same. It's just all about the software in this case that it is able to be run on Windows 95. Yes. Important to read this. Your HAL 2000 software is a living product. What the heck? Uh, just go to the website and download new release. Well, this is just saying that the thing gets patched. Doesn't mean it's alive. Let's see, the quick start guide. Install it, load it, test it, run it. Hmm. Sounds like a Daft Punk song. And here's all the goodies. That is a rather pleasing looking CD-ROM, I gotta say. Look at that. Holy crap, and it's gold on the back, too. Fancy. So it comes with another one of these lamp modules here. It's the exact same thing, really. As far as I know, nothing really changed. And it connects via what appears to be RJ11. So that's probably what this is. And then we just, I guess, plug that right in here. And... Yeah, we got a serial interface and Windows software. So uh, yeah, let's control the house with my voice.
So the setup process for this is pretty much exactly the same as what we just did. We plugged in the serial uh, cable to the computer and then that of course goes to the wall wart thingy and the other connector goes to the lamp module and that goes to this lamp which is what we're going to be trying to control here using HAL 2000. And then we also have a microphone here which is going to allow us to do all of this stuff with voice activation. So um, it does, what the heck? This is copyrighted material to register. You must contact them at the phone number. Oh my goodness. Ancient DRM can go and suck it. So look at all these things that it can control. I mean, it's pretty impressive for, you know, the late 90s. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I never really looked into this kind of thing back then. We have uh, HVAC, infrared, internet, a personal assistant, some security options, various household sensors, uh, your computer system settings, telephone, voice recognition, a weather station, and of course your X10 things, which allows you to control pretty much the power of anything in your house if you have it connected to the appropriate module. And then if we go over here, we should be able to go into the system data and check out all these other things. You got macros, a Rolodex, a selection of various customizable devices, schedules, different sensors, conditions with rules and things like that for the actions it can do. And it'll do reminders and timers and all sorts of things, man. It's pretty much Google Home or Alexa back in the day. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So in the devices here, we can add a device such as the X10 we have connected. So I'm gonna do location, uh, desk, and then the device lamp. So that is doing desk lamp from the X10 interface we have connected. Um, A1 is the house and unit code, because that's default. And then these are the different types of options. Um, it's pretty much all the same stuff really that, uh, <laughs> that the DOS one did. So we can click this to test, and there's our light. Click that to turn it off. Uh, so that's fine. There's an LED bulb in there, so I'm sure it's gonna do the same weird blinky thing. Um, so we're not even gonna bother with the dimming. You can add it to different groups. For instance, you could associate a front porch light with the group outdoor. So when you turn off outdoor lights, the front porch light is among the devices affected. That's pretty rad. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna add that. And now at this point, we should be able to activate commands through the microphone. I'm just going to uh, hold it up to my myself here and computer. Yes. Oh, hi. I have opened the Rolodex. <laughs> Why did it open the Rolodex? Uh, close the Rolodex. I have closed the Rolodex. Turn on the desk lamp. I have turned on this lamp. <laughs> that is so cool. Turn off the desk lamp. In seven minutes, turn off the desk lamp. No. Canceled. Turn off the desk lamp now. I have turned off this lamp. What is the meaning of life? Oh. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for all the help, Hal. You've been a blast. Monday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday at 12 p.m. Turn on this lamp. <laughs> Please say yes or no. <laughs> no! Canceled. <laughs> It's got some adorable quirks, but this just amuses me to no end. The TV guide is open. Oh, good grief. Well, that's about it for this episode of LGR Oddware, and I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly did. <laughs> I was really amused that Hal worked out as well, as well as he does, and he's really adorable. And then, of course, just the X10 in general. It, it, I was surprised at how well this all works and how relatively simple it is to set up. Um, I'm not necessarily surprised in, like, the way that it works. Like, I have an intercom system from the 70s that relies on the same types of methods of, like, power line communication within your house. House. So I know that the tech is like, you know, it's kind of an old technology and it just works. But this one in particular, the HAL, uh, <laughs> it just cracks me up. I, I wish I could have my entire house like controlled with this. Like if I could replace Google Assistant with HAL, I would totally do that. This guy's got some charm. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode of LGR, then perhaps you'd like to see some of my others. There are Oddware episodes every so often, as well as all sorts of explorations of hardware and software and tech stories and games and whatnot. And once again, thank you very much for watching.